I have a part I need to make today out of aluminum for a 3D printer. It's a very simple part, so I figured this might be fun to just kind of follow my thought process from start to finish and see if it's interesting. Got me some hot chocolate. So I'm gonna get started. I may start by just tidying up because I'm in the middle of several projects that are kind of exploding everywhere. So uh, I think I'll do that first. It's a good day. It's a good day to be in the shop. Yeah. So this is my fidget craft workstation. I'm working on injection molding. This is where I assemble all of my fidget craft and, uh, and my 3D printer over here. But it's kind of in disarray, so I'm gonna clean it up. These McMaster car bags are amazing. Anytime I get a shipment from McMaster car, I always save the plastic bags because you never know when you're going to need a Ziploc bag that's like this shape and this size. So this, I'm going to got some injection mold stuff that can be ground up and remolded. So there's no reason to throw them away. I'll just make a bag full of this stuff. This is the mess that happens with a 3D printer. This, there's just all of this stringy stuff that gets everywhere. So much better. Every time you change the filament, every time you finish the print, there's just all these little extra bits that gets everywhere. So let's open Fusion 360 and I'll start working out the tool path for this part for a 3D printer. Here it is, here's the part. Rotate it around. So basically cut, I need to cut the profile. I need to cut these um, pockets and I need to drill and tap these holes. Pretty simple. Go into manufacture. And milling setup stock. Now the stock that I'm using is half inch by three quarter inch. So I'll tell that. First thing I'm gonna do is determine what tools I need. I need a face mill. I should write this down. All right, tool number one is face mill, then let's say we do the tool number two, let's do a quarter inch end mill to do the outside profile, then we'll do an eighth inch end mill to do the this pocket. And we'll do a 16th inch end mill to do the inner hole. And I'm doing all of, I'm doing a lot of tools because I have them already set up in the machine. So they're already there. Otherwise I might try to be more economical. Um, let's do a spot drill to do these holes. 
Actually, we should spot both. We'll just drill through both. Um, six, we need to do a tap drill. And then seven, we'll do the drill. No, not the drill. Do the tap. All my tools. Someone's calling. Car repair man. My car's ready. Had an oil leak. All right, let's see. First thing I want to do is face this sucker. Okay, it took me a little time, maybe half hour to kind of suss it all out, get it ready. But I can now simulate the entire part. Um, so it would be the face, the spot drill, the drill, the tap, then cutting the profile very lightly so as not to rip it out of the tiny jaws. Then there is the pocket there, and then the inner pocket, and then the chamfer, and then we'll flip it over, and then use the face mill to cut away all the remaining stock, and then come around and chamfer the backside, and that's it. Total machining time, and this is just being very conservative, is about six minutes, so. It'll take me longer to get the tools set. So that's pretty cool. Now it's time to get my Tormach turned on. So I'm gonna hit the lights. And I'm gonna come over here. Simple as that. Now, let's come around over here. Booting up. Alright, gonna reset this, reset that, reference my Z, reference my X and my Y. There it goes referencing. Alright, now I wanna warm up my spindle. So let's change it to 500 and hit forward. goes. Got a little bit of a squeak to it. I don't know what's causing that. Next I need to cut this down to about an inch. All right. I'm gonna get the burr off. I got this great scotch right wheel. I love it. Joe Pye, who is on YouTube as a machinist, he recommended this wheel, and I have not regretted it. Check him out, Joe Pye. Joe Pyzinski, Joe something, but he calls himself Joe Pye. We can turn that off. That is sufficiently warm. Move this guy over. Got my parallels. That might do it. So I only need 200, no, I only need 150 thousandths clearance above the vice jaw. I think I'm good. Let us see. I am, no, I'm 200 thousandths above the vice jaw. Turn on my air compressor. We'll let that compress, get me some air. I don't have the biggest air compressor, but it works. It just has to refill every few minutes. Okay, now I got air pressure. So 
uh, my probe. So now I'm jogging my probe to be above my part so I can get my Z height. And I'm going to find X. Boom. And then I'm going to carefully raise it back up and out of the way. Boom. That's done. So now I've got to figure out my tooling. I've got two tools that I got to add into it. I've got a lot in there that's already in there. I don't need all of it anymore uh, for right now. So let me get my tool list. I've got my tools loaded except for my spot drill. Figure you might want to see that. Kind of just kept going. Taking out a half inch end mill and going to put in my spot drill. Pulling out the half inch ER collet. And I've got a quarter inch ER collet. Fits in the cap. I once ordered one of these for my lathe and sent it back because the cap wasn't sitting flush, but I didn't realize you have to pop it in. But I learned. <laughs> you pop it in before you put the tool in. Then you put the tool in. Then you tighten it down, there we go, tool ready to go back in the machine. And that is tool number three. It thinks. It thinks the tool is in there. All right, now it's in there. All right, so now I need to touch off the Z height of all three of those tools that I added. Um, so this spot drill is in there. So I'm going to uh, move and set the tooling. And so now it's gonna come down and Tap the electronic tool setter, set the height. That's so much easier than having to do it by hand. I love this. It just takes a little time, but not as much time as it would take if I had to do it by hand. I think we're ready to run it. Here we go. Before I proceed, I'm going to check the threads. Yeah, those are good. Let's keep going. Look how tiny it is. Beautiful. 
So now I have to be able to hold on to this section so that I can deck all of that off. I've got the second setup ready to run. So here we go. And second start. On both sides. Pull it out. Smallest thing I've ever machined. So that's it. Thanks for following along and hanging out with me while I work on this. Um, I'll see you on the next video.